All right, good morning or afternoon, everyone. This is Mark here, and today I'm going to take you through Dynamic Ship and all the goodies in the latest version. We're going to just do a quick review of, you know, sort of who we are and what really Dynamic Ship is and, and why you would want to look at it. And then we'll jump right into the software demo and then cover off with, uh, you know, a little bit on the, the pricing the summary. All right, with that, let's get started. Dynamic Ship specifically, what is it? Well, really what it does is it allows you to access your carriers through Business Central. So either your contracted rates, or if you've got carriers out there you don't have a specific account for, like the UPS DAP program and a bunch of other things, USPS, it'll go out there, get you the rates for your shipments, and then generate your shipping labels and do a bunch of other things. So what are those other things? Well, like I said, at first we can get the, the shipping uh, costs for you across multiple carriers simultaneously. We can generate the labels. We can do bills of lading for both parcel and less than truckload and full truckload shipments. So we do support LTL and FTL as well. We have a ton of carriers. So all in there's, I don't know, maybe 500 carriers we support uh, within the system. And uh, when we do that, that freight quoting, that, that rating to get the, the cost for the shipping, we can do that from a sales order or a sales quote, or we can do that back in the in the warehouse in the shipping area. If they need to select a, a freight carrier for some LTL shipments, they can do that rate shopping right from within Business Central in the warehouse, but we can also do it up front when we're doing a quote or a sales order. And then we can decide what we're gonna charge the customer with you know, configurable freight markups. So we can mark up our charges to the customer or give them discounts or do whatever we like from there. Uh, address validation, so we can make sure we're shipping to the right address. We can prevent you from shipping to incorrect addresses and make it easy to enter and, and deal with the addresses that you're entering into the system. And finally, all of this is done online. So you're not loading the rates from your carriers into Business Central and having to manage them yourself. You're putting your account ID in the system and it's going out and asking that carrier in real time, hey, what are you gonna charge me for this shipment? Okay. All right, uh, a few other things. Uh, so lots of different ways of you know packaging, because you, you, know, you have to tell a carrier, hey, how many boxes do I have? What's in the box? What are the weights? Those types of things. So we can do a few different things. We can do scanning, and that's typically what people are, are using if they're using dynamic ship, is they're doing barcode scanning, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But you can also do quick entry, where there's no scanning or anything at all required. You just say, I want to ship a few boxes, and away you go. There's manual packing. So we can still say, hey, I've got these three items in this box, this four items, in, or these four items in this box. And we can do all that manually without scanning any barcodes. And finally, we've also got auto packing where the system will say, hey, I think you need these three boxes in order to package this order up. So we've got all of those different options available. And if you want to extend the solution, if you want to add additional business logic or different freight pricing rules or all those sorts of things, it's really easy to plug that in and extend the solution to essentially do whatever you want it to do. And then finally, it does work with the, the other products that I've mentioned, like uh, if you're using Warehouse Insight and you want to do your packaging while you're picking, like I want to build up pallets while I'm doing the picking, you can do that. And that information is immediately available within Dynamic Ship to do your bills of lading or to do your rate shopping, all those sorts of things. And the fulfillment worksheet as well to you know easily go from the fulfillment worksheet to packaging or, or anything like that. All right. So let's, uh, oh, one last little comment on this. So the carrier integration, I mentioned we've got like 500 carriers that we support roughly, somewhere in that range. So most of those are accessed through what we call an API provider or freight integration provider. And those guys are the ones that determine, you know, what carriers are supported and what services are supported and things like that. And so, so for some of the LTL and FTL options, there may be an additional cost for those through those providers. But if you're doing parcel, you can do 10,000 parcel shipments a month and there's no extra cost or anything like that for it. You're just paying the dynamic ship subscription and you get you know, all of those shipments uh, up to that, that quantity. If you need more than that, then they'll charge you a, you know, a penny or so a, a shipment or something along those lines. And then we do have some direct connections to carriers like a direct FedEx connection, things like that, that doesn't go through one of these API providers as well. And if you have a custom carrier you wanna use or one that we don't support, you can plug those in. All right, now with that, let's go and actually look at what the software looks like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here, you know, there's, um, 
a few things like we've got the the fulfillment worksheet I could could start with, and we've got you know a bunch of stuff we can do within Dynamic Ship here. And this is typically where people are going to work, like order packaging or package worksheet. But for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start at the sales order level. So we're going to go into a sales order, and we're going to look at doing some you know rate shopping and and some packaging from the sales order. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to filter down to the sales orders I care about, and I'm going to grab this guy here. Now, this particular one, we've got, you know, a few items to ship. You know, we've got our shipping address and everything set down here. And there's actually a mistake on the shipping address that we're going to see in a moment. And then we've got some, some other options we can set for the shipment. So the, the basic ones, like do we want a return label? You know, do, do we want blind shipping? Those types of things can all be set. And there's more advanced options up at the top. And then we've also got things like, Hey, do I want to, you know, use the, you know, customer's uh, account number, right? Do I want to do third-party billing, or do I want to get, you know, a signature, or whatever? So you can set all these options ahead of time right here on the sales order. We can also set these when we're doing the packaging in the warehouse, if you prefer. So when you're doing the sales order entry, you can set them here, and they will default in from the customer as well. So if we come in here and for this particular customer, they have specific options, those will dump in here automatically if you've got them set up for that customer. But back to this, up at the top here, we've got some of the dynamic ship options or actions that we can perform. And you know, one of them is the freight quote. So we're, we're entering this order and the customer is saying, well, what's it gonna cost me to, to ship that out? So great, I'm gonna hit this and figure out what it's going to cost me to ship this particular order. But when I hit this, we're going to run into a bit of an issue. And it's telling me that we're missing the zip code. Or in this case, it's a Canadian shipment, so it's a postal code. But we're missing the zip code for this. So this is an error message that pops up. Now, we can go into the dynamic ship uh, setup and um, you know set it up so that it does address validation automatically here instead of generating an error. But in this case, it generated an error. And what I want to do now is go and fix that address. So I can come down here and I can see, yes, you know, that that is missing. I may not know what that is. So I can hit validate address here. And that address validation, we can trigger automatically. So when I do the freight quota, could have done the address validation there. I can validate the address when I release the order, whole bunch of different options for when we automate that. And this address validation can also be done when we enter a customer, when we enter a vendor, when we enter a ship to address, all of those sorts of things. But in this case, I'm going to manually come in here, hit validate address. It's going to go off and say, hey, yep, yeah, we validated the address and we found the issue and we corrected that for you. And it put the appropriate zip code or postal code or whatever into the system and we're done. So simple as that, I've corrected the address and, and we're good to go. And in some cases, it will you know, be able to fix the address. Other cases, it'll just tell us what's wrong and give us suggestions, things like that. But it makes it very easy to make sure you're shipping to the right address. Then when I hit OK, it says, hey, do you just want to update the order or do you also want to update the customer as well? So if the customer address was wrong because that's where this default's in, it could also update that as well. So at any rate, that's the address validation. I just hit a button, it fixed it for me, and now we're good to go. So now I'm going to go, OK, yeah, I got your address right. I'm going to do this freight quote. So now we're going to hit this. It opens it up. And I've got a few options for doing the freight quote here. So the first thing is, you know, I can manually say, you know what, I think we're going to be able to ship this in a standard box, and maybe we, we're going to be able to ship it in two boxes, and it calculates out the average weight per box, and then I can go hit get quote, and away we go, and it'll, it'll give me my quotes. Right? The other option is I can use this auto pack where it'll estimate the packages that I need for this particular order. So instead of me manually think, you know, going, ah, I think it's going to be a couple boxes, if I hit auto pack here, what it's going to do is it's going to, based on the rules we define, figure out, figure out based on the cubage of the items and everything else, what I'm going to need for boxes. And this is what it came up down here. It said, okay, well, I need two large boxes. I'm going to package two of these guys in, in this box, one of these guys in that box, and the remaining two can go in my normal box size. So it builds that all out. And then after it's done that, it goes out and gets me my freight quote, right? So I've got Whatever carriers I've got set up in the system, I'll get the freight quote back. So I've got some FedEx, I've got Purelator, which is a Canadian one, and I've got some UPS and everything else. So all of the carriers that you have set up in the system, it'll come back with the rate quotes. And a couple of things that we can see on here. This price, this is actually what we're charging the customer. So that's based on the rules we've defined, the pricing rules we've defined for this specific customer or this specific customer type 
or campaign or whatever we've got set up on that order. This is what we're charging them. This is, if they went to, for example, the FedEx website, this is what the FedEx website would say for this type of order, $481. This is what FedEx is charging us. So this is our contractual rate with FedEx. This is what they charge the customer if, they, if you just checked it on the website. And this is what we're actually going to charge the customer. So we can come in here and look at based on the delivery days or the, the price or the, the cost or whatever we like. And here you can see if I ship at UPS next day, I'm, I'm actually charging them some money for that. I've marked it up. You know, based on all of that information, we can come in here and decide how we want to ship it. I'm just going to choose FedEx today. And when I hit that, it's going to go in and update the order with that quote. Okay, simple as that. Give it a sec. It's a little slow today for some reason. Okay, so what I did was I added in that shipping charge here. And you can see that it tracks the cost of this freight and it tracks what we're going to charge the customer. So we've marked it up by 10% here. So we can actually do reporting, and I'll show that later, to show you if you're making or losing money based on your shipping by customer, by vendor, like carrier, or whatever you want, those sorts of things. But now at this point, you're saying, why are we charging them $400? You said it was free shipping. Well, we also put a 100% discount on that freight line as well. So now they're going to get their invoice and they're going to see a $400 discount on that shipping. And the reason they get free uh, shipping on this particular order is because it's over $1,000. So the rule I actually set up was to, uh, you know, give them free freight on $1,000 or more. And if we want to see what that looks like, this is really kind of slow today or my hotkeys aren't working. But if we go in and, and look at the freight prices, we can set up all sorts of things based on customer, all customers, price group, whatever you like. We can set up rules based on that, based on the shipping agent, the service, all those sorts of things. So in this particular customer, I've got this rule that says for that particular customer, regardless of which carrier we use, if their order value is $1,000, we're going to mark up the freight 10% and give them a 100% discount. And then we've got other rules where if we ship a UPS next day air, we're going to mark it up by 20% and we're not going to give them any discount whatsoever. So there's all sorts of rules you can set up to very quickly and easily determine what you're going to charge the customer for the shipping. Okay, so now the other option that we have on here as well is you can go in and you can, you know, uh, enforce this price that we've given the customer. So let's say I go and package this up and I only need one box and my cost now is, a, is $100. We can either update this price to reflect what we're actually paying for the shipping or we can maintain this price. Either way, we do update that cost, so you can see are we making or losing money on my shipping. The other thing that it did when we did that freight quote is it enforced that um, that carrier now, so we now know it's it's the FedEx two day, and that's what we're going to use to ship it. So when it gets to the warehouse, they know how to ship it. Okay, so it's simple as that. That's the freight quote. Now let's say I do want to actually get my my shipping labels uh, at this point, and so what I'm going to do is Right from the sales order, I'm actually going to get my shipping label. Now, in a lot of cases, you might want to do this. You may be in an organization where you do actually want to generate shipping labels from a, a sales order. Um, typically, though, we're going to work from either the order packaging screen or the package worksheet. But I'll just show you what this looks like. If I want to just generate my shipping labels without telling the system which items are going into which box, this is all I have to do. I simply come down here and say, you know what, I'm going to use a standard box and you know, it's this is my standard dimensions for that box. I can hit get weight here, and that'll read the weight from a scale, or in my case, I don't have a scale hooked up, so it just prompts me for a weight. So I come in here, enter the weight, and maybe I'm shipping also one large box as well, and, you know, maybe that was only 15 pounds or something like that, and that's it. And then I say, get me my shipping label. I don't have to rate it or anything because we know we're shipping at FedEx today. It's going to go out, and it's going to print my shipping labels. Simple as that. I've got it set up to do a print preview here, so you'll see it pop up in a second. In a production environment, we usually look at about three seconds, up to about five seconds, to generate that shipping label. In the test environments, it's usually you know seven to ten seconds. But basically, what it did was it went out to the carrier, grabbed the shipping label. If you're using our print node connector, it would have printed this out on the printer by now already. No, you know, user interaction required whatsoever. And out come my my shipping labels. Right, so I've got box one of two, box two of two, out it goes, and and we're done. We've we've shipped that uh, that product. Okay, now I'm actually just going to come in here and delete these guys because I don't want um, don't want these guys here. 
actually i should just be using my hard keys to be honest all right so that's one way of doing it using the quick label quick label you just go in you say i'm shipping these boxes it generates your labels and we do a bunch of other things when we do that right when we process these orders again we'll add in that shipping cost the way i've got it set up is it updates the price based on our actual but as i mentioned we could have left this as for at 400 dollars and just updated the cost down here we also put in of course the tracking information and the carrier details and all that kind of stuff we also have package level tracking as well so we'll track the master tracking number and then on each box that we've we've packaged we can we have that tracking number on each individual box so if we are using something like the package worksheet to identify which items are in which box and a box goes missing we know exactly which items went missing and what the tracking number was and everything else okay now uh, when we did that when we process this order so if i if i post it and everything else what happens is in addition to adding the freight price and everything uh, onto the the sales order and the tracking number and everything else we also send the customer an email with that information so if i go into gmail here as if i'm the uh the customer and i come up here this is the email that was just sent a minute ago and you can create whatever templates you like for these emails so this is automated this can happen when we generate the labels or when we post the order you know there's a few different triggers you can use to send the emails and again you can define whatever template you like here so you can make it fancy here's a different one that you can put in you know a list of all the items that were shipped if you like you know here i've got an order total and things like that and speaking of that you know that's sort of a email based asn to tell the customer this is what's coming if you need to do edi asns we can do that as well so we integrate with you know guys like sps and others to to grab the information from what we've packaged and send those edi documents off to your your trading partners but if you just want it in a simple email i can create a template here that lists all the items that i'm shipping on this I can also attach a copy of the packing slip or the order confirmation or the invoice or any of those types of documents as a PDF onto this email as well. But anyway, back to the one that we just sent. Again, this can be per customer or you can have a global template or whatever you like. And one of the nice things on here is the ability to include this tracking link. And for parcel shipments, what that does is it takes the customer to a page that has their logo on it their advertising, all that kind of stuff. So if this is like Joe's bookstore, this would have Joe's bookstore logo up at the top here, you know, his links, his advertising, all that kind of stuff. So without going into a big e-commerce portal or anything else, I've got a nice way of, you know, showing customers when their, their packages are going to arrive. They've got all the same detail as if they went to FedEx and we can upsell them and market to them and all that kind of stuff from this page. And that's just all included as part of Dynamic Ship. Okay, so that's the, the email capability. We can send that again when you post or, or when you generate the label. Now, that was a very straightforward or simple approach where I open up the sales order, I can do my freight quote, I can do my quick label from there and everything else. But in most environments, typically what's happening is we've entered the sales order, it's gone out to the warehouse, it's been picked, and it's coming back now to um, you know be, be shipped from the warehouse. So there's a couple of ways we do that, either through order packaging or, or package worksheet. And I'll show you a little bit on, on order packaging here real quick, and then we'll go to the, uh, the package worksheet. So uh, on the order packaging, if you don't want your shippers using sales orders to do quick label or any of those sorts of things, this is typically what they'll use, right? I could go to that sales order here, and I can see, you know, has it been labeled, has it been packaged, any of that kind of stuff. And from here, I can use quick label or I can use a package worksheet or just generate a label if the carrier and everything's already been set, those sorts of things. So I can do all that same kind of stuff from this view so that, that your shippers aren't in the sales orders directly. And I should mention here, I'm showing sales orders, but we support warehouse shipments, sales orders, transfer orders, all that kind of stuff. So anything you want to ship out of Business Central, we likely support it. Okay, so this is uh, one tool for using to, to come in here to quickly uh, you know, grab the orders you want to ship either label them, do the quick label, or do the package worksheet. But what most people will do in, uh, in an environment where you have people actually picking and shipping the products is they'll live in this package worksheet screen that's about to open here. So the idea behind this is, you know, today if you have a, a shipping terminal out there that's, you know, running, you know, Ship Manager or WorldShip or some other third-party shipping solution, instead of that, 
you'll be running this. So we're not really integrating with, you know, the carrier specific software uh, like WorldShip or whatever. We're, we're really replacing that. So people are going to kind of live in this screen. This is where your shipper is going to live. So they're going to come in here and, you know, somebody's picked the product and they're going to drop it off at, at my counter and I'm going to package it up now. And the package worksheet, the, the value of this over the quick label is we get to indicate which items are going to which box and we get to verify that we're packing the right items. Okay, so I'm going to start out by doing some barcode scanning. So I've got a little, you know, dumb USB scanner attached to my PC here and I'm going to scan in things like you know, the order. So the barcode on the pick ticket or the sales order to, to open that up. I'm also going to be able to scan commands. So any of the commands that you see on the menu here and things like that, I can just scan a barcode to, uh, to access those commands. So I'm not having to use the mouse and the keyboard at all usually to be able to package my, my orders. So the first thing I'm going to do, somebody drops off the order I need to ship. I scan the barcode for that order. It opens it up. And here's again, those items that we saw before that I need to pack. It's telling me to ship at FedEx today. If this wasn't set, so if the carrier wasn't set here, it would allow me to do that rate shopping right from the warehouse to choose the carrier I want to use. Because this is set, it won't show me the rates. It will just generate my FedEx labels. Uh, the other option we have is if you leave this blank, it'll always choose the cheapest uh, option to use when it's shipping the product. So kind of like best way, and it'll choose the best way based on what I package uh, for the labels. Now here, um, I'm going to do, do the barcoding approach. So if you have barcodes on your items, this is what you want to do. And if you don't have barcodes on your items, you really want to consider adding them because what this allows me to do is very specifically scan which items are going to which package. And that gives me that, that verification step that I'm actually shipping the right product, right? If I scan, maybe somebody dropped off a yellow chair that's not this item number and I scan it, it's going to yell at me and not let me package that. So I'm going to save all of those missed shipments and the customer anger and the cost of shipping things back and everything else. Just that alone will pay for dynamic ship the first time that happens. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do here, it says, okay, scan a package to pack. Well, I don't have a package yet. If you're using Warehouse Insight, maybe you do have a package because you've already packaged everything up while you're picking it. But I'm going to scan a package or a command here to create myself a new package. And that's this standard box template again, and you can create whatever templates you like. So it's saying, hey, we've got this package here with these dimensions, you know, starting weight of zero pounds, and now I can start packing my items. Now I'm gonna scan barcodes, but as I mentioned, you don't have to, you can use the mouse and the keyboard to do all your packing. If you don't have barcodes on the items, I could, you know, just pack this line into that box, or I can come in here and go into to edit and edit, edit the quantities that I'm packing and those sorts of things. But barcode scanning gives you that physical verification you're shipping the right product. So I just scan the barcode on the item. And that can be a UPC code, it could be a vendor barcode, can be your own custom barcode. Doesn't matter what it is, we'll be able to understand it, cross-reference it up to your item and, and package it up. Now I've also got it set so that every time I scan an item, it just packs a quantity of one. We can also have a prompt for a quantity. So if you're packing 500 items, you don't have to scan 500 times, you scan once and say I'm packing 500. We can also track the lot numbers and serial numbers that you're packaging as well. So if you have those traceability requirements, you don't want to know which lot numbers or serial numbers you shipped, we'll capture them here with scanning as well. Okay, so anyway, I've packed one of those 1972s. Maybe I've packed another one in that box. So I've got uh, two of those packed in that, that box here. And you'll notice it's calculating the weight for me uh, automatically. So again, we can read the weight from a scale. Uh, we can manually enter the weight, we can change the dimensions at any point in time, either by scanning command up here or just using the, the edit. Um, but yeah, we can read that weight or we can um, uh, calculate the weight that we're, we're packaging. Okay, so now let's say that that box is full. So I start uh, the next box and then I'm just going to pack the remaining items into that next box. And I, I sometimes um, get the um, uh, the question, well, what if I'm, um, um, what was the uh, question? Oh, yes. What if I'm partially shipping this? No problem. You can you can partially ship this order. Like if, if one of these uh, wasn't uh, wasn't available, I can I can leave that on back order. And if you do have back orders and things like that, our order fulfillment worksheet will help you manage those back orders. So when I get that product in, it'll automatically tell me it's available and, and make me ship it. At any rate, I've got these, these two packages set and 
I'm good to go. All I have to do now is say, print my label for me and out it goes. Or again, if I want to come in here, change some of the, the options, like maybe I do want to set, you know, signature or print something custom on the label or whatever I want. I can set these here at the point of shipment or I can set these on the sales order. And again, these can also default in from uh, the customer, things like hazmat and all that kind of stuff. Okay, now, um, but in this case, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say get label and it's gonna do exactly what I did on the sales order. This is gonna go out, it's gonna grab my FedEx labels, it's gonna print them out and I'm off to the races. Again, it's just, for me, I'm got, I've got it set up to do a print preview, but that's just an option you set. If you're using our print node connector or universal print from Microsoft, this would already be on the printer and we slap it on the boxes and out the door we go. Okay, simple as that. All right. Um, now, one other thing uh, while I'm here, let me just bring up this order. So now I'm bringing up a different order and I should scroll down here. This one, we haven't we haven't specified the carrier yet, by the way. But this one here is actually a, an international shipment because I'm shipping it from a US location up into Canada here. So this is an interna international one. And um, so for that, we're gonna need need some customs information. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna indicate what I'm shipping. And you know, if I don't have a barcode for these bikes as an example, let me just show how that works. I'll just pack those items and I can pack partial and things like that if I'm only shipping one. But now I've got you know the items that I'm shipping, but I need to generate my commercial invoice and all my customs information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in there, bring up my uh, electronic version of my commercial invoice here. So what we've got, is you know everything defaults in at the bottom here so this is what i'm actually shipping on this order this is my my value from the sales order i can come in here and override this maybe if this, these are sample items or something i can change the the value for customs purposes the weights the hs code all of that kind of stuff comes in automatically so there's really nothing i have to do worst case i have to come in here and put in the content explanation but, but we can also default that in as well um, to be bike or whatever you want to do. Uh, so that's really it. All I'd have to do now if I wanted is hit certify. And that's basically like um, electronically signing this commercial invoice. And we'll send that information to the carrier directly. And they'll use this information to clear customs for us. And they'll also send back their version of the commercial invoice. So it'll be like a FedEx branded commercial invoice we can use, or we can print the commercial invoice from within Business Central, and you have control over this. You can, you know, customize this uh, this report. It's just a standard Business Central report to make it look any way you like. So we can print the commercial invoice from Business Central, or we can use the one the carrier sends back to us. Okay. And if you're using AES or you know B13 and all that kind of stuff, you do have the ability to specify that in here as well. So the um, exemption and exclusion or the the proof of filing uh, code or whatever, you can enter that here. And if you are using AES, we do have integration with AES Direct, sort of a separate extension that we have available, but we can integrate with AES automatically as well with through the AES Direct service. Okay, so anyway, that's the customs handling. Dirt simple. Really, there's nothing you have to do, which is great if you're doing a lot of international shipments because you don't have to you know, do much to, to get that commercial invoice and all that documentation out. It's also great if you don't do very many international shipments because everybody forgets how to do it and this thing is all automatic and just does it for you, okay? So that's a little bit on the uh, on the custom side. Now, well, and actually one other thing on there, uh, you know, if you're using a customs broker, there was a question uh, uh, earlier on a customs broker, you can come in here and set up, you know, uh, the customs broker that you want to use and all those sorts of things uh, in this as well, if you wanted to. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. What else do we want to cover here? Um, all right. So in a nutshell, you know, that that's how we can get things out the door. I showed you, you know, from the sales order, we can do that, that freight quote and we can do the auto packing where it'll suggest all the boxes we need to use to package the items. We can use the, uh, the quick label. Um, to you know, just say, hey, I'm shipping three boxes, give me three labels. Or we can use a package worksheet to very explicitly identify 
you know, which items are in which box, those types of things. And this, you know, if you're doing EDI, this is what you'd want because now we can send an ASN that tells them, hey, there's two boxes coming and these are the contents of the box and weights and everything else. All right, so you've got all of those options for doing your packaging and getting stuff out the door if you're dealing with sales orders, warehouse shipments, or transfer orders. But let's say, you know, I'm in a warehouse and I'm just, you know, I want to ship a forklift battery from one warehouse to another or a, a part or I want to send a stack of documents to uh, to my lawyer or something like that. Well, we also have the ability to do a miscellaneous shipment that's not tied to any inventory or to any documents within the system. So the way this works is I simply come in there and I create a, a new miscellaneous shipment. And let's just say I'm doing uh, stuff and junk is what I'm shipping. And then I can choose an address from within the system. So existing addresses or just manually enter an address. But if I choose a specific customer here, or maybe another warehouse might be better, but anyway, yeah, maybe I'm shipping from one location or another. So I'm shipping to my red location from my, you know, main or something like that. Um, and then, you know, like it brings in the address automatically. I can, I can change this if I want, but then I just indicate what I'm shipping. So I can say, yeah, I'm shipping, uh, you know, a pallet and uh, this is my, my stuff. And then I'm going to ship uh, a second pallet. Uh, yeah, we'll do another pallet here. And this is my junk. And that's it. I can enter the weights and everything else. And then it's exactly the same. I can go ahead and get my, do my rate shopping, set my options, all that kind of stuff. And it'll generate my shipping labels or my bill of lading and all that kind of stuff for me based on, on that. So that's the miscellaneous shipping. So all, those are all the different ways we can get stuff out of Business Central, get your shipping labels, get it shipped out the door. Okay. Now, because I'm shipping pallets here, right? These are the, the two pallets. This is gonna have to go LTL or maybe even uh, full truckload. So for that, we have that capability as well. Everything I've been doing so far is parcel, but let me just jump into uh, the LTL side of things a little bit. So I've got some larger shipments here, like this one's going to the Central Park Zoo here. So let's open this up and, and see what this particular shipment looks like. This one I've already packaged up, probably because I was using Warehouse Insight, you know, scanning, on a mobile device to, to package everything up and that integrates nicely with dynamic ship and so i've got all my pallets to find right i've got a couple pallets and there's all the stuff and my overall shipment if i scroll down i can see i've got two pallets and total weight of 300 pounds roughly and that sort of thing so i can also set all sorts of options here like i can specify uh for for ltl uh you know my my pickup date you know is it ltl or is it uh do i need uh, full truck load uh, or, you know, how do I want to get this out the door? You know, which dock to come to, you know, do we need, um, you know, is it, you know, all these different options for LTL, right? So anything that you need to indicate to the carrier what they're going to have to do with that, that freight, um, we can set here and that's used when we're doing the rate shopping for LTL. So you can set all the accessorials, all the details and and get this thing ready and then when i say hey go out and get me my label or you know scan the command up here what it's going to do now uh let me see do i have a carrier set on this no so there's no carrier set so we're going to go out and find a freight carrier for this particular shipment so when i get get label it's not going to be really anything different than you've seen before it's going to go out and do that rate shopping across all the carriers in the system both parcel and ltl whatever i have set up and it's going to bring back the rates now, when we're dealing with LTL, I think I have about 80 LTL carriers set up in the system. So it's going to take a little longer. LTL often takes, you know, 20, 30 seconds to do the rate shopping across all of those carriers. Uh, so we'll give it another sec here. And again, what it's doing is it's going out in real time and checking with those carriers, you know, can you support the shipment? And if you can, what are you going to charge me for it? And it's actually taking longer than it usually does. We'll give it another second. There we go. So let's come back. And these are the carriers that want to quote on that, that particular shipment, right? So these are the guys in here, all, uh, well, we've got FedEx in here, but these are all the, the LTL carriers. And these guys here are really cheap. Maybe they've got a empty backhaul going back or something like that. But, you know, we've got all the rates from the different carriers and we've got a bunch that, that didn't want to quote, uh, like this guy, you know, they don't ship to New York and so on and so forth. And these guys, you know, only ship in Canada, so on and so forth. But these are the guys that are willing to quote on that. Same thing, I grab one of these, like if I decide I wanna use these guys, cause that's who I wanna use, I grab that. And what it will do 
is it'll actually go out and bring back a carrier bill of lading for the shipment. Uh, it'll also print out a, a carrier specific pallet label, which is, you know, they're typically useless. Um, well, I shouldn't say it like that, but you know, this is the, the carrier specific um, pallet label. You'd probably want to print your own out of Business Central. But what it did was it brought back that bill of lading from the carrier. So this is the carrier's bill of lading that I can use, slap it on the, the, the shipment, and, and away we go. Okay, and I can reprint this anytime I like. It comes down as a PDF, but I can reprint that as well. And I can also print my own bill of lading. If you don't want to use a carrier bill of lading or you don't want to have that LTL integration, I can do my own bill of lading. And this is just a built-in Business Central one that you can customize and, and change the layout or do whatever the heck you want with it. And it's you know fairly standard. Uh, style bill of lading with all the details on there. Okay. Now, um, if you want to do LTL, but you're using a broker or, uh, you know, you've got specific arrangements with people and you don't want that rating integration, we can still handle that as well. So I didn't mention that uh, too much here. But if we go back, I'm going to bring up this, this order here and I'm going to go out and do the get label on it. And Let's say I just want to, I found a carrier on a website that I want to use, and um, I'm not going to use any of my, my standard carriers. Uh, I'm going to enter the information from an external, you know, rate quote that I've gotten. So I phoned up a guy and said, can you ship this? Yep. They've given me a bunch of information. So if I choose this external, what it will do is just allow me to enter the detail like, yeah, it's actually, you know, Joe's carrier or whatever, like I don't have any good ones here, but I'll just call it external. So I've got, you know, Joe's carrier ground, they're gonna charge me a hundred bucks. And he says, it's gonna take him a day to deliver. And he's given me this pro bill or, you know, tracking number and I'm good to go. So by doing that, we still send the email to the customer. We still add the freight costs and everything to the sales order. We still do all that kind of uh, stuff behind the scenes, but it just allows me to use, you know, an external, website or whatever or phone call to get that information plug it in a few little details i plug in and we get all the benefits of dynamic ship but are still able to use you know whatever external carrier we want to use all right now um i meant i just mentioned that you know we we add the cost and the freight price and everything onto the sales order and all that well the value of that of course is in is in the analysis so let's actually have a quick peek at that if I go in here, this is the uh, Dynamic Ship Analysis app. You can get this off App Source for Power BI. And when you, you know, install it, it'll bring up this data. To connect this up to Business Central takes, you know, an hour or so. We'll jump in there and we'll set it up, hook up your real life data, so that this is essentially real time data coming from Dynamic Ship. And we get all of this data just as a side effect of people going beep beep in the package worksheet or doing the quick label or whatever. It, you know, it's just all this data that we capture as a matter of course. So number one, we streamline, you know, the shipping process significantly. Like if you're using barcodes, it's 10 seconds worth of system interaction to, to get my labels out, right? Uh, it's pretty simple other than the, you know, physical act of packaging it. We've, we've knocked the shipping process down to like 10 seconds. And as a side effect, again, we get all this detail. So, you know, we can, uh, you know, slice and dice this any way we like. We can filter on all of this. You can drill down, like if I want to find out, you know, these are all the, the totals for all my carriers. But if I drill down into UPS and standard, you know, you'll see this all update based on, uh, oh, didn't click there for some reason. Oh, because I still have drill down on. So we go into standard here, you know, it'll filter this down. We can see by location what we're shipping, how much we're spending, all of that kind of stuff is available. Very nice little dashboard. The other cool thing, as I mentioned, is if we go into customers here, this tells us, you know, this is the, the top five customers, but all the data is there to report by customer, by carrier, you know, by state, by lo warehouse location, whatever you want to see you know, how much people are paying us for the shipping and are we making money or losing money on that shipping? So these guys pay us $4,000 for shipping, but, you know, we lost $800 on that, which might be okay because maybe they get free shipping all the time. But this at least gives us that information. Are we making or losing money on those shipments? Okay. And there's lots of information you get. We've got a few, you know, decent uh, dashboards here that you can pull whatever you want out of the system and report on it. Okay. Uh, all right. 
now one last little thing sort of related to that is the ability to do uh, shipment manifests so manifests i mean they're useful for for operational purposes like loading the truck and everything else but they're also useful for you know doing a little bit of invoice reconciliation because what we can do is we can create a manifest and then go in and pull in all the shipment documents for a specific carrier like this appear later i don't have any but it'll bring on all the the uh the shipments we've done with them based on the tracking number and we can see what we were quoted and compare that to the invoice we're getting from the carrier and see if we've been you know there's been chargebacks or upcharges or you know whatever else to see if we were actually charged what we were originally quoted so you can use us both for from an operational perspective to, to load the truck check it off do all that kind of stuff and you can use it for uh you know sort of the invoice reconciliation as well all right but that's the bulk of it you know there's a bunch of other things in the software that we can do you know we didn't talk too much about return labels which we can do or custom commands which we can do all that kind of stuff but you know in a nutshell that's what dynamic shift does and i talked about a ton of stuff there but you know the very simplest use case is i'm on a sales order i say print me my uh, my shipping labels i've got one box to ship or i've got two boxes to ship and you've got your shipping labels right or i can do that freight quoting or whatever if you're in a more advanced warehouse where you've got you know pickers that are independent of shippers i'd use a package worksheet to package everything up get it out the door very quick and simple to do all right now um let's jump back into this so after all that you're thinking that was awesome what's it going to cost me to get that thing well not much actually in fact it saves you so much money it's almost like dynamic ship is paying you I should do late night uh, TV infomercials or something. Anyway, uh, so it's priced per location. There's no user-based pricing. Like if you've got a warehouse and you've got five shipping stations, it's one cost for that warehouse and, and that's it. Um, and if you've got multiple warehouses, uh, it gets discounted. The you know, first warehouse is full price. After that, it's, uh, it's discounted and it drops down. I think you get up to a 60% discount after a, a few warehouses. So it doesn't cost a lot of money to get all of that functionality. There's no feature-based pricing. So you know, the emailing and you know, address validation and all that kind of stuff, that's all just included. There's no feature-based or user-based licensing. Now, the only additional cost is if you're doing LTL, uh, you know, some of those LTL providers will have a monthly cost or they'll have a per transaction cost or something like that. So you'll want to reach out to, to those guys. We'll help you sort that out and they'll be able to help you with any additional costs. And there's also um, uh, fixed price implementation. So quite often uh, your partner will do the implementation for you. We've, we've had some customers do it themselves, but I strongly recommend you have somebody that knows what they're doing, do that implementation. And if it's from us, we've got a fixed price implementation that will install it, train you, support you, do all that kind of stuff. And it's just in and, and working uh, very quickly. Um, one other note on these freight integration providers, I'm just gonna jump back into the web browser here. If you go to our website and you go to apps and you go to shipping apps, open that up and you go down, you'll see some of the additional capabilities that we have. So, um, you know, a few other things like, you know, we covered off dynamic ship. I talked a little bit about the free order ship express, but, you know, the analysis app, some of the hazmat capabilities and the LTL and the EDI capabilities as well that we can plug into dynamic ship. So if you go in here, you'll see all, you know, drill down and give you all the details. Like if you want to implement EDI with it, this will take you to a page where you can get all the information you need and, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, and speaking of that uh, additional information, if you go to Shipping for Dynamics, it'll basically take you to the, our website, shippingfordynamics.com. There are additional videos, all sorts of stuff. You can get into our support area there, our knowledge base and our forum if you have questions or if you want to see the setup guides and everything else, you can go in there and get all the information uh, from that site. All right. I think with that, uh, we'll end it for today. Thanks everybody for attending and we'll get back to your questions via email uh, probably later this week. Thanks everyone. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content.